There is no calling or ordination of God that works outside of the government of God. Everything that the Spirit of God places within you functions effectively within the engine of God's government. For you to be who the Lord has called you to be, one of the first things you must understand is government. And I realize that in a generation where they have been told to believe that the most powerful person you can be is the person of yourself without the strength of others, I found out that in such a generation, the way Satan eats believers is unbelievable. And he's able to do that because he has found people that are constantly trespassing the boundaries of God's grace. The sins that many of us commit are not sins of commission, they are sins of omission. So that's why as a believer, it is, it is catastrophic to not know the word of God. It is catastrophic to not understand the workings of the kingdom. Many people understand church. Many people understand religion. But very few people understand God. So today I don't stand in front of you to preach a church sermon. I stand in front of you to release the spirit of government. And I stand in front of you to release the grace of revelation so that when you walk out of this room, you will become larger, you will become bigger. Not because you are puffed up by the abundance of word, but because the spirit of God has planted inside of you the seed of the knowledge of God by which men are able to rise up into the fullness of their inheritance. The mantle of Deborah, why? I'm just going to start by telling you something about myself. I am the most ordinary woman you could ever know. If you meet me outside of this platform, you will wonder what makes me anointed. Even I wonder why, what makes me anointed. There's nothing special, to be honest absolutely nothing I don't, I don't come from a strong lineage of pastors and apostles I don't come from a generation of preachers my forefathers my grandmothers they were not church people as a matter of fact I come from a lineage that I had to do a lot of spiritual warfare to break the things that accompanied me I am a product of the grace of God and the workings of the spirit of God my life is a learning and a school of how the Lord can take a person and daily add line upon line until he arrives at the fullness that he desires. I celebrate those who have been given inheritance, but I also celebrate those who had to labor by grace to arrive at where God has called them to be. I say this to you so that you would understand that what we speak about when we say the mantle of Deborah it's not for a select few. It's not for the people who went to Bible school. It's not for the ones who have the endorsement of several people. When we talk about the mantle of Deborah, we are talking about the desire and the intention of God that presses against the heavens until the heaven rips open and the first woman that it finds, it grabs you. I'm talking about the same spirit of God that took hold of a prostitute in Jericho. And the Spirit of God began to minister to her heart. Because in that very moment, the Lord was not looking for the most sanctified woman. The Lord was not looking for the person that prayed for 10 hundred hours. The Lord was not looking for the person that came from the lineage of David. The Lord was just looking for a woman who had the natural disposition of somebody who could take a risk. The mantle of Deborah is not about all the holy virtues that you have accumulated. Because you have accumulated certifications from every theological school. But yet you have not activated the grace of God within your life. The Lord God Almighty is called coming for the graces and the giftings that you learnt even in strange places. The things that people have said to you, cast away this your ability to negotiate. Cast away this your fighting nature. This your capacity to push for things that you believe should be yours. Cast it away. The Lord God Almighty said, I did not need a revival meeting to use Rahab. I did not need her to be dipped in the water for her to be baptized before she became a deliverer. There are sometimes when God is desperate concerning Concerning the destiny of a nation that the Lord will take anyone who is on his side the mantle of Deborah 
is not about the church you attend. The mantle of Deborah is not about the tribe you come from or the county that you hail from. The mantle of Deborah is about those who are on the Lord's side. The spirit of Adonai is what causes a woman to be elevated from the place of her hometown, to be elevated from the circumstances of her nation, to be elevated to the place where she sits within the council of God. And she takes a seat among the elders. And even though you be a human being that lives in a house in a physical location, but in the moment when you fall upon your knees or you shut your eyes to pray, you are translated into an elder in the realm of the spirit. The spirit of Adonai. It is called the burden of the maker. It is by the spirit of Adonai that we congregate today. It is by the spirit of the maker that we are here. The owner of On Sunday Earth. The mantle of Deborah is the mantle by which we can activate the next leg of revival. In 2018, the spirit of God said to me, he said, in 2019, you're going to get pregnant. And he said, in 2020, you're going to have a baby. He says, when you have the baby, I will release the mantle of Deborah over my church. I didn't understand what God was talking about. I went back, I read Judges 4, I read Judges 5, the story of Deborah. And I hope everybody here has read it because I'm going to be moving real quick. In 2020, indeed, by the word of the Lord, I had a baby. And that's a story for another day. Some of you know my testimony and some of you have watched it on YouTube. It was by the hand of God that a baby who they said at 23 weeks old had to die because the 90% of my amniotic fluid had been lost. And the doctor looked at me and said, Madam, look at it in the scan. 90% is gone. This child is going to die any moment from now. We have to take the baby out of you unless you will die with the baby. Everything inside of me was shaking. And I looked at the doctor. I said, doctor, thank you. I thank you for your work so far. I thank you for your effort. I know you've done your best. And it's the truth. I said, but God did not promise me a dead baby. God promised me a living child. I will not carry a dead baby out of this hospital. He said, pastor, you don't understand. I respect you also, but you have to. I said, no, you don't understand. My womb is not a graveyard. I don't come to bury things inside me. And I looked at myself and I said, You see, you are a life giving spirit. Everything inside me was shaking. But then began the journey of delivering a child at 36 weeks, that at 23 weeks they pronounced him dead. Listen to me. The mantle of Deborah is not just about you coming forward and hands being laid on you because every gift that you receive must be tested and it is proven by your acts of faith in that moment i thought i was fighting to give birth to a child but what i did not realize was i was fighting to give birth to a dimension of god's spirit i was fighting for an activation i was fighting for a release and when that child came it did not look like what i was waiting for as a matter of fact, I believe the Lord is drawing a, a line between my child and the things that he's doing. When my baby came, he was so small. He was not bigger than this cloth. As a matter of fact, I used to tease and I used to laugh. And when they say, Pia, I'll say, ah, if you see the baby. Because when he came out, they were too sure that something was wrong with him. They checked his heart, checked his eyes, checked everywhere. They kept checking. And they finally told my husband, he's such a strong boy. They were confused because the baby was so tiny, like the fist of my hand. But there was nothing wrong with him. But you see, we had to watch that baby grow. We had to feed that baby. We had to nourish that baby. We had to strengthen that baby. We had to empower that baby with food, with prayer, with love, with every single thing inside of us. It took so much out of me and out of my husband. But Judah today stands as one of the most intelligent two and a half year old that I know. He's so full of life, so full of grace, so full of vitality. Why do I draw a parallel line between Judah and the mantle of Deborah? I thought I birthed a child and then I would do an assignment. But I did not realize that the child and the assignment were one. Because when you are a prophet, sometimes the things in your lives are signs and symbols. 
And the baby in himself, as he was small and nurtured to strength. That is how the seed that God is planting in you today. Sometimes it may come out small. You can walk out of this room and after two days, you just still hear it faintly. It is no longer as strong as it was when you were in the room. Listen to me. When that day comes that you want to start disbelieving what the Lord deposited inside of you, remember my story. Remember Judah. Remember how small he was and how he was nurtured consistently unto life. That is how you nurture your calling and ordination. No man becomes great simply because the oil of God is upon his life. The oil of God is meant to provoke you to unlock doors. The oil of God is meant to provoke you to come into dimensions of expressions of the Lord. Because the oil of God without the knowledge of God is a deadly weapon in the hand of a fool. Your oil is meant to pull you into learning. Your oil is meant to pull you into faith. Your oil is meant to pull you into consecration and dedication. This mantle that we speak about, it doesn't come or it doesn't rest simply because it was given. It rests because you adhere to certain spiritual protocols. I know that we want to believe that these things don't matter anymore. I know that we want to believe by sermons that we have heard in the past. Oh, which is all by grace. It is grace. It is grace. Listen to me. The grace of God is not given to you just so that you can receive forgiveness for sins every time you transgress. The grace of God is given to you to empower you so that you don't sin. You are empowered by grace. You are sustained by grace. You study the word by grace. You study the culture of heaven by grace. Tonight, put up your hands. Father, I ask that the same way I have been lavished by grace, that you will release this grace upon your children, that every single person in this room will come into a strange new activation. When they walk out of these doors, let them say, I feel the Lord all around me. Father, let them know what it is like to walk with you. Let them know what it is like to hear you. Let them know what it is like to see you. And let them know what it is like to be taught by you. They shall be preserved in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, in 2020, the pandemic hit. And I could not understand why the Lord was speaking about the mantle of Deborah. Until one day, I humbled myself and I went back to the scripture and I began to read it again. And in Judges chapter 5, it says, In the days of Shamgar, when the highways and the byways were deserted, village life ceased. The people could no longer walk on the highways. They had to go through back alleys because they were afraid that they would be killed and be taken down. He says, in that day of oppression, in that day of struggle, in that day of pain, I, Deborah, arose. And so the Lord said to me, he said, the pandemic has hit the same way that the pandemic of Caesarea hit Israel. He says that in the same way that Deborah arose in the day that the children of Israel were constrained and Deborah arose in the day where even the men cowered in fear, even the, the great men and the warriors of the land did not have the ability and the capacity to rise up and wage the necessary warfare. He says in that day, Deborah was able to find not just the heart of God for the nation, but the strategy of the spirit by which the nation could be liberated and delivered. He said in the same way, I am put in that same mantle upon a generation of women and I am calling them forth and I am calling them out and I am giving them the ability to stare themselves off, stare themselves off beyond history, stare themselves off beyond tradition stare themselves off beyond the, the history of their father's houses, their mother's houses, the circumstances of their lives to realize that they were born for such a time as this there is none of us that should be overtaken by the darkness of our time. Because locked into the DNA of every generation is the capacity to not only bear but override the darkness of their time. You have been divinely configured by God to be, a, to be the solution. As I was speaking to the ministers yesterday, I said to them, 
that as women, one of the first things you must resolve in your heart is that you are God's choice. The troubles that many people suffer is not the trouble of the presence of God. It's not a question of whether or not the Lord is in the midst of them. It is the trouble of identity. Many people have come to believe that they are defined by the successes of their lives. That they are defined by the circumstances of their life. Did you not hear the Bible says that the builder of a house is more glorious than the building itself. You must be more glorious than the things that surround you. I cannot be defined by meetings and conferences. I do not derive my sense of identity from how many people call me here of the most high. I derive it in the place of prayer. I derive it in the place when I meditate upon the Lord. And I rise up in my spirit and I see that my eyes can still see. My ears can still hear. And every time I say, lift up your head, O ye gates, the gates are lifted up. And every time I call upon God, he says, here I am. That is where I get my identity from. I don't need the endorsement of a man. It would be great if you partnered with me, but whether or not you do, I move. Hear me. Deborah, the Lord says it's time to get up. The days of complaining about your circumstances and your trouble are over. The days of seeking pity parties and pity party sermons are over. We don't even have the time to mourn over your last loss. I am not being insensitive. Apostle Angie was prophesying just now. She prophesied accurately. I cannot tell you the story of my life. But I can tell you one thing. That God has not made me immune to the troubles of the average woman. I know what it's like. I know how it feels. But I consistently make the choice that as long as I have breath in me, I will constantly sing of the praises of my God. As long as Jehovah permits me to wake up, I will ask him first what his agenda is before I even have any conversation about my trouble. Because my troubles make no meaning and they have no worth if they cannot find a place within the agenda of God. So I glory in my infirmity. Because I see the connection between my infirmity and the purposes of the heavens. Hear me, Deborah's. 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 In a generation where people glory in pain and things like depression and every kind of phobia, it has almost become fashionable to say, you know, I have gamotophobia. You know, I have, there's this thing that, that happens to me. I don't know if you know it. I just have, it's like, every time I see, like, people just walking, it just does something to me. Auntie, it's a demonic problem. Come for deliverance. I, I don't know, I just, like, I'm the kind of person that I don't know how to stay in places. Listen, Dali, Dali, Dali. The Bible says, according to his mighty power at work within you. People say, oh, these pastors don't understand. They are not in touch. Hear me. We are very, very, very much in touch with the wiles, which is also translated as the methodia, the methodology of Satan. It is because we are in touch and we know it. That's why we disregard him. I am not disregarding the fact that he exists. But I am disregarding the fact that he's trying to make himself seem as though he is more glorious than God. So it's not like I'm pretending that I am strong. Actually, I am strong. But P.I., I, I know you just lost this. I know you just failed this. I know that. No, you actually know the facts about my life, but you don't know the truth about who I am. You can hold on to the fact while I hold on to the truth. And the truth determines what is produced out of me. So, Debras, grow up. Embrace the word of the Lord that you may grow thereby. Every word in the Bible agree that it is true. 
Somebody asked me last week, I heard you teach a class about prayer and you said pray the word of God into your spirit. What does that mean? I said, ah, fantastic question. Come, let me answer. I said, you will take a scripture. You will hold that scripture in prayer. You will pray it again and again and again. Until that scripture does not only make sense to your physical mind, it makes sense to your spirit and it becomes a place in the spirit. So that when you stand and you say, the Lord is my light, you are not wondering whether God is. It is a knowing and a realm in the spirit that you have entered into. So that when people see you radiating like they don't know that it began from a scripture that you fully embraced. The word of God is not a text. The word of God is a life. Every word that you receive is a dimension of God's life that you come into. Deborah, get past the fears. Deborah, get past the pain. Deborah, get past the trouble. I'm not saying it does not exist, but I'm saying put trouble where it should be, at the feet of Jesus. Some of you need to dethrone your pain. Some of you have elevated your calamities above Jesus. It is now sitting on the seat that should belong to the Lord. So that every time your life is talked about, and every time you tell a story about yourself, every time you go to prayer, it is the Lord called pain that you are talking about. Dethrone him, cast him down. If you are going to be an effective leader, and an effective woman, you must go past your emotions. You must be able to hold emotions by the neck and put it under your leg and tell the emotion, you serve the purposes of God in my life. You don't rule me. My emotions are not my God. I may be angry with you right now, but I can still love you and follow you to the ends of the earth because what releases me from you is not the way I feel about you. It is God. Because we don't understand government. That's why many of us are sick and weak, broken, some die. You cannot descend the outworkings of God within the body. But I pray that today the Spirit of God will teach you. If you would receive the mantle of Deborah and perpetually walk in it, you must be a woman that every time you have gone through a season, you look at it and you count it as gone. You are ready to humble yourself to enter into what next in the Lord. And every time you come into the next, you know that you are first a student before you become a tutor. It is a humbling thing to have worked with God for 20 years and still fall on your knees to say, Lord, I don't know you, that I may know you. Because the more you know God, you realize that you actually have no idea what God is about. And so here was Deborah, her life, sitting under this palm tree for 20 good years doing business as usual, doing church as usual, doing Christianity as usual. Deborah was powerful, but there was a big problem. Even though Deborah was doing what was good, Deborah was not doing what was the perfect will of God. The danger for many of us is not that we are not doing anything. It is that we are doing the thing that makes it impossible for us to see what the real assignment should be. Deborah sat under that palm tree and it felt good. Every day people came to her and said, Ah, Deborah of the Most High. Ah, Deborah, that prophetic word you gave me yesterday. My goodness. If you see the way the thing came to pass. Ah, Deborah, you prayed with me and I was able to conceive. Ah, Debbie, baby. <laughs> what use is all of that if Israel is still under captivity? What use is all of that if Kenya is not changed? What use is all of that if during the elections you need to run away and go and hide somewhere? What use is all of that if you do not have the power to influence the major circumstances of the land? What use is it? I am not saying there is no place where God takes care of our domestic problems. But I'm also trying to say that when the nation prospers, the people prosper.